Chapter 16 Mint Chocolate Chip Penelope's face was twisted in confusion, which only made Gordon more perplexed. Malcolm, who was descending into the depths of his own cross-faded swirl, looked back and forth between them, equally confused about whatever unspoken dialogue Penelope was trying to engage in. You guys have been silently staring at each other, like, really loudly for, like, a really long time, Malcolm said, leaning back in his chair and propping his feet up on the stone rim of the fire pit. Penelope ignored Malcolm. G Gordon, you keep nodding at the barn, she said slowly. Gordon didn't know what to say. Yes? Of course? Every time he mentioned his ice cream from the thunder cone, he had nodded in the direction of the barn they were sitting outside of. Penelope shifted awkwardly. You uh, put the ice cream inside the house, didn't you? The heat of the day, a dramatic, humid swing from the brisk cold of the morning, was suddenly pressing uncomfortably against Gordon's entire body. His robe felt several pounds heavier. Um, uh, Malcolm, uh, he uh, put it in a freezer in the barn. Penelope turned a slow, unpleasant gaze toward her pothead anarchist friend. He smiled at her, taking far too long to interpret her expression. Then his smile melted like ice cream sitting in the Florida heat for nearly two hours. With slow, agonizing tension, Penelope's head pivoted back to Gordon. Oh, Gordo. She looked like she was about to deliver tragic news about the death of a loved one. That old fridge in the barn? Gordon gulped. His chest tightened. I use it to store dry food for the animals, she said. Reality had caught up to Malcolm. Ah, oh, fuck. My bad friend. Gordon swallowed. He felt sick. The only working freezer is in the house, Penelope said, nodding in the opposite direction. Another painful moment passed before Gordon shot to his feet as if a puppeteer had jerked his strings. He stood there for another second while Penelope's mouth moved even though no words came out. This couldn't be happening. Not after everything Gordon had gone through to get his mint chocolate chip ice cream, the green kind even. He entered the barn, moving with jerky, unsure steps. Behind him, Penelope slapped Malcolm upside the head before following Gordon. At the broken, puke-green refrigerator, Gordon pulled open the freezer door. He found himself praying for some kind of magical alternate universe where the ancient freezer still worked. Instead, stagnant, warm air moved in the wake of the freezer door. No magic here. No God to answer Gordon's prayer. The paper thunder cone bag sat in the middle of the stale freezer compartment. Gordon 
took the handles and pulled the bag out, his arm shaking with nervous, traumatic horror. Penelope stood beside him as he lifted the quart of ice cream from the bag. The sides of the carton were squishy. Oh, Gordo. But he detected the faintest hint of cold in his fingertips. The integrity of the carton hadn't been broken, and the lid hadn't come off yet, trapping inside what little cold remained. Oh, if, if we go right now, Gordon breathed, his chest rising and falling under the looming shadow of a panic attack. Penelope's eyes brightened. Dude, we are good to go if you think. Gordon nodded rapidly, returning the carton of ice cream, such that it was, to the bag. Let, let's go. Yes, uh, now, uh, please. Penelope ran to the tiny electric car, pulled the charging cable, and hopped behind the wheel. Gordon continued moving in that jerky, broken puppet cadence, all while cradling his precious cargo like the patient on life support that it was. Before the passenger door could fully close behind Gordon, the car zipped out of the barn, careening around a corner and racing to the gate at the entrance of the ranch. Minutes after clearing the long, unpaved road that connected Penelope's ranch with civilization, the tiny electric car came to an abrupt halt. They were stuck in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic because, of course, they were. Gordon wanted to scream. He wanted to punch something. The rage that boiled under his stoic exterior felt viral, a spreading infection that threatened to consume him. Between slow, stuttering breaths, Gordon said, Uh, would you, uh, mind, tur mind to turn the radio on anything, really? Penelope knew from high school that anything really wasn't at all accurate. Gordon had long been in the habit of using relaxing tones and mellow symphonic soundscapes, preferably with noise-canceling headphones, as a kind of break glass in case of emergency when the anxiety of his surroundings became too much to handle. She pointed at the dashboard in front of Gordon. There's a cable in the glove box. She said, you can hook up your phone. Despite how insignificant the task might have been, it was the perfect activity to distract himself from that overwhelming sense of rage and anxiety that was slowly filling Gordon up to his brim, his emotional drowning all but inevitable. After placing the ice cream at his feet, Gordon fumbled his phone out of his robe pocket and connected it to the vehicle's radio with the aux cable. He had pre-programmed playlists at his fingertips, and a moment later, a calming, cinematic ambiance from decades' worth of film scores began playing from the tiny car's speakers. It might not have been the galactic dream cone surprise of Journey of the Sorcerer, but it would have to do. Gordon focused on his breathing, while letting the instrumental music fill every corner of his brain, cutting off the mental oxygen that fueled the simmering rage anxiety. Penelope remained appropriately quiet as Gordon sank into his audiotherapy. 
one track ended and another began. The minutes ticked by. Traffic moved an inch at a time. Gordon took intentional breaths in through his nose and out through his mouth. He tried to not think about how the minuscule electric car was completely surrounded by hundreds of tons of dumb steel, everyone pointlessly stuck in the growing heat of the day, unable to move forward, unable to go back, unable to find a way out of the gridlock. Gordon tried to not think about how many people in all of those vehicles that boxed him in were carrying a deadly virus and how many of those vehicles had their windows open, spilling those viral-laden breaths into the open air where the slightest movement could send invisible particles of poison in through Gordon's own open window. He pressed a button on the door, and the passenger window rolled up. Gordon tried as hard as he could to not think about how suffocating this entire situation was. He tried to not think about how, if he had never left his house that morning, if Gordon had never gone on his stupid fucking quest for ice cream, he wouldn't even be here right now. Gordon, Penelope began apologetically. It's okay, he said quickly, not wanting to betray what a precarious place he was in both emotionally and mentally. Penelope took the hint. Music tracks rotated. She thumbed her phone. Hardly a dangerous habit if you weren't even moving. Oh, fuck, she said, skimming local news. Those goddamn Nazis are protesting again at... Redacted. A whole section of I-4 got shut down. This gridlock is from the detoured traffic. Fucking Nazis. Fucking Inbred, rage bait, cosplaying white fanatics. Fucking anti mask, anti vax idiots spreading their do your own research, flat earth, screw science, the earth is only 4,000 years old ideologies. Fuck, fucking fuckity fuck, fuck. Penelope turned off the air conditioning and the car immediately got warm. I'm sorry, Gordo. The AC is just draining the battery. Fuck, 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 fuck. Gordon reached down to his feet, slipping his hands into the thunder cone bag. He gently squeezed the sides of the ice cream. Hold on, Penelope snapped spinning the wheel and slamming the accelerator to slip into the tiniest gap between two tank-sized pickup trucks. The pint-sized electric smart car swerved into a narrow bike lane for a few hundred feet before turning into a gas station and pivoting down a side road. They were finally free from the gridlock. Hey, what did I say about being able to get out of tight spaces? Penelope said. I'd like to see any one of those road pig pickups try and pull that off. Police sirens yelped. Lights flashed behind them, and Penelope's victory melted instantly. Gordon's brain was so short-circuited that all he could do was breathe. Penelope pulled over, and as soon as the officer appeared at her window, she started talking. Look, officer, I know I made a few illegal maneuvers back there, but come on, at least I am actively contributing to thinning out that gridlock, right? Please exit the vehicle, ma'am. 
Oh, come on. Sitting in that traffic was tantamount to waterboarding. Ma'am, this isn't about the traffic. If you could just step out of the vehicle, please. You too, sir. Penelope and Gordon exchanged glances. Penelope's expression was confused. Gordon's expression was stoic on the verge of total meltdown. They got out of the car. Gordon clutched the bag with his ice cream. The officer turned Penelope around and immediately handcuffed her. A little pro tip. If you're going to commit acts of vandalism, your getaway car should probably be a little less conspicuous. The officer started around the rear of the car, coming for Gordon. As he went, he tapped the rear window, looking down at the empty paint cans Penelope used to deface the puppy mill storefront. You should get rid of the evidence, too. Hey, Penelope shouted. Okay, sure, yeah, you got me, but it was just me, right? I'm the one who vandalized the pet store. That guy, he had nothing to do with it. He's just a hitcher I was giving a ride to. The officer stopped and studied Gordon. He seemed put off by Gordon's robe. I met him at the park earlier today, Penelope insisted. He was taking photos of squirrels and needed a lift. Oh, oh, and the pet store guy, right? He only saw me because I was the only one doing anything. Gordon, show him your phone. Penelope looked at the officer. He's just a guy taking pictures of squirrels. At first, Gordon was so flabbergasted by the whole situation that he had no idea what Penelope was telling him to do. On autopilot, he started leaning back into the car. The officer grabbed Gordon by the arm. I'll get it, hotshot. The phone was on the passenger seat, still connected to the stereo cable. The officer unplugged the cable and handed the phone to a still-confused Gordon. Show him the picture, Gordo. The picture. The selfie. His white whale. The fattest squirrel Gordon had ever seen. Gordon opened his camera roll and tapped the very last thumbnail. The officer could plainly see Gordon in the same robe he was currently wearing, taking that dramatic selfie where he was looking in one direction, and the fat squirrel, uh, practically vertical with limbs outstretched, was flying behind Gordon's head in the opposite direction. The officer swiped up on the screen, and looked at the date and time of the photo. He looked at Gordon, down to the thundercone bag that had finally begun to leak melted green ice cream, and then shook his head. I don't even want to know, the officer said. He pointed at the electric vehicle. Look, the car stays here, but you're free to go. You, the officer went back around the car and grabbed Penelope by her upper arm. You're coming with me. Gordon stood on the side of the road, feeling like an idiot with his melting ice cream, watching as his best friend from high school was led to the police cruiser for the petty fucking vandalism of a piece of shit puppy mill. Penelope looked back at him. She lifted her shoulder helplessly. Whatever all this was, it was the best Penelope could do. It was all she could do. And despite the rage 
anxiety, confusion, and general sense of total paralysis, a part of Gordon still understood everything Penelope had just done for him. He stood without moving a muscle as Penelope was put into the cruiser. The officer got behind the wheel. When they drove off, Gordon still hadn't so much as twitched. There was no longer any music to mark the passing minutes. Finally, Gordon pushed the passenger door of the tiny car shut. He turned toward the general direction of home and started walking. The life changing mint chocolate chip ice cream was definitely ruined now.